what is a story? Like, maybe let's start okay. there. Well, that's a good question. It's the first question I ask when I teach. Because uh, when uh, I work with corporations or well, anybody, really, I find that people don't have a definition. And I, I hear people use the word story and throw it around, kind of like what we're talking about, without actually having a definition. So they'll say, well, anything mm. can be a story and everything's a story. And it's like, that's not true. That that means it has no definition. It actually has a definition. And yeah. here's what I think is important about understanding that, first of all, when I'm working with brands or anything like that, it's like, well, well, again, or anyone, it's like, well, if you don't know what a story is, then how do you know you're doing it, mm. right? And years ago, I was listening to an interview with a jazz musician. He's a jazz bassist. And apparently very, you know, very sought after, very uh, highly thought of bassist. And the interviewer was asking him, well, how did you get to be the bassist that everybody thinks is the coolest bassist? And he said, well, I was a bassist for a while and I was pretty good. But he said, one day I decided to look up bass in the dictionary. And he said, I looked it up and a bass is a foundation. Everything is built on the bass. Mm -hmm. Once I understood the definition, I got better at my job because I knew what I was supposed to do. Hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, I'm like, I'll look up the word story. I think I probably looked it up before this, but anyway, I, I, I'm not sure the chronology, but anyway, I looked up the definition of story once and it has a very, it has a very specific definition. And I was like, Oh, okay. That's good. Because all these things that people are saying are stories. Like sometimes people will say uh, a mood is a story or mm. Uh, an attitude or uh, a way of thinking or mm. a worldview. And those aren't story. And so here, before I give the definition, the other thing that you have to know about how dictionaries are written, a lot of people don't know how dictionaries are written. How you write a dictionary is this. They, they you know, have a bunch of words and they go ask people they think are smart people, word people, what do you think this mm. means? And they get a consensus, which is why you get hmm. in the dictionary a one and a two. And it's like most people said this, some people said this, right? Because that's the way they write dictionaries. Right. Also because words change over time, right? So it may mean something hmm. 100 years ago and mean something else now, right? The right. word drama has changed like that, for instance. It's a, it means something hmm. different than the way people use it. But because drama, comedy was also drama when the Greeks created drama. Comedy and drama are this uh, are comedy. Comedy and tragedy are drama. Okay. Right. We mean drama as you know serious. We really talk about tragedy. Right. 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 But, right exactly. Yeah. 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 But anyway, uh, and it, it's just a personal thing with me. It kind of makes me crazy. But, but <laughs> that we use it wrong. <laughs> right. But that's yeah. just that's just because I have that knowledge base, and so For yeah. Sure. yeah. But anyway, so the definition of story was in the dictionary. I forget which dictionary. The series. Or the, I'm sorry, the telling or retelling of a series of events leading to a conclusion. Well, mm. I should say I added leading to a conclusion. So it's the telling okay. or retelling of a series of events. And I was like, yeah, that's not exactly right. Now, right. because I knew how they wrote dictionaries, I was like, oh, they asked a bunch of word people what they thought story was, but they mm. didn't ask people who actually write stories what they thought story right. was, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so- It makes you wonder about the rest of the words. Well, it, you know, I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure that other people with other expertise might say yeah. that's not quite the definition, right? People conflate words and storytelling. And so they think that word people are story people and they're not necessarily, mm. which is one of the reasons, speaking of definitions, I don't like that we use the same verb for physically writing as storytelling. Mm, because right. people think if they're good with words, they're good storytellers. And that's not necessarily true. Right. And wor stories don't even need words. Right. Right. Charlie Chaplin had a whole career, you know what I mean? Mm. You know, yeah, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. The first 30 years of movies, you know, there were very few words, totally. right? So pantomime, there's all kinds of things. You don't need words to tell a story. So mm. this conflation, I, I'm not a big fan of, but I want to say why I added leading to a conclusion at the end of the definition. All stories have a point, a reason to be told. They are going somewhere. So leading to a conclusion, not meaning having an ending, but having a point, conclusion. Right. That's this, a good distinction. Yeah, this and this equal this, right? Right. So that's the definition that I work from. Yeah, and that leaves open space for like open endings too. Because if it were like the conclusion or whatever, 
I think that if it, I, I like that you don't, it's more the point can be you walk away maybe not knowing how a story ends, but you have a, a sense of what it's about. There's a point to it still. Well, yeah. Endings are interesting. They are. I would love, yeah, let's talk about You want to talk about endings? <laughs> really quick. Yeah, yeah okay. I'm, I'm curious about it. Well, endings are, I, I, I talk about story map a lot, that stories have a sort of logic that I, I think of this story map. And so it's like this, we can talk about act structure, but act one is one thing, act two is another thing, and act three is what that equals. So this plus this equals this. It's been defined as, uh, well, just like writing a paper or anything, you have, uh, you have your thesis, you have your mm. antithesis, and you have your synthesis. This plus mm. this equal this, right? right? And so an ending is not a thing that exists on its own. An ending is what these other two, two things add up to, right? right? And so if an open or ambiguous ending makes your point, then it's perfectly legitimate. But mm. if it's a lazy way of not finishing. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Which a lot of people use it for because they don't have anything to say, but they think if they're writing words, they're writing, then they get to the end. They go, well, I'm not going to say what the ending is because really, because they don't right. know. Right. Exactly. Um, right. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So it has to be making your point. If your mm. point is life has no point, has no meaning. You still have to prove that just like you would anything else. Right. Right. You can't just have a thing, an incident, and then end it and go, you know, well, that's because life has no, it's like, nah, you just cheated. Right. I used to work with a guy when I was sort of first starting and he was an animator, illustrator guy. And his parents were both musicians, like classical musicians. Mm. And we would listen to, you know, we'd listen to music as we were working, we worked in an animation uh, studio. And uh, some song we were listening to, you know, from the sixties or something, it sort of faded out at the end, you know, the lyrics sort of just faded. And he said, you know, my parents hate that. And I'm like, why? And he goes, well, because it's a cheat. And that stuck with me because at the time I was 20, oh, it wasn't even, I might've been 20. I was like, oh, does that make, it stuck with me. And the more I thought about it, the more sense it made. Like, yeah. oh, you didn't know how to end. So you just faded out the sound. You just faded yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, right, you know? exactly. 